this time on Air Show. The jet team dives into Reno. We're walking into the lion's den. And things go sideways. Ah. Scariest moment of the season. Prepping to fly. The wing walker. Have you seen a fire truck? No crash fire today. Refuses to fly. We're standing down. The guy that she was married to died in an airship. Can't shoot in the red. And a test flight. <laughs> Put Super Dave's life. Oh, crash Hang on. On the line. Ah. The Patriots jet team is rolling in to one of the biggest aviation events in North America. The Reno Air Races. Reno is a very different show than the rest of the air shows we fly at. Reno's the only place in the world where they have pylon air racing in the classic form. It's rare, it's unique. It's also where Patriots owner Randy Howell got his start in the business. I flew at Reno for many years, racing in several different categories. It's a spectacular show. Patriot One, race control, taxi to chocks. Taxi to chocks, race. It's not your typical air show crowd. That crowd is probably the most savvy aviation crowd you can fly for in your life. You know we're walking into the lion's den when we go to Reno. They know the names of the pilots. They know the types of airplanes. They're watching. And this year, the team has something to prove. There was a little extra tension that we've not experienced at any other show, specifically because of the FAA. At Reno last year, the FAA called to knock it off on us. When you get a knock it off, you gather all the airplanes up and you land. Turn in now. The FAA felt that we flew over the crowd on a corner marker. In this case, they made a mistake. We pulled the tapes and we were in the right. We don't care about the politics of who was right or wrong. We just want to fly. Bases were cleared, smoke check on the runway. Because of that, we're coming into this show, and they remember who we are, we remember who they are, and so there's an automatic tension there. It's the Patriots' last chance to practice before tomorrow's show. Patriots were clear for takeoff. The conditions at Reno are difficult at best. It's windy, it's really bumpy, it's mountainous all around. It's high desert is what it is. We're up at 5,000 feet to begin with, but then you throw in the heat upwards of 100 degrees, then your density altitude is just through the roof. There's just no air to push through the engine to make thrust. The tough flying conditions. One, left turn. Two, three, if you keep a little more space, don't help me. Make the team look sloppy. Come on, get in. Son of a bitch. Sorry, guys. Oh, boy. Of his home field, air show pilot Super Dave Matheson is in the middle of another punishing practice. To get the maneuvers crisp, you got to fly it every day as many times as you can. Okay. Definitely a stress reliever. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, feeling good now. Come straight on. Test flying. Flying the MX-2 is dangerous enough. Guys ready? Flying a home-built bush plane that's never left the ground demands a different kind of pilot. 
They were looking for a test pilot. And I've flown over 175 different types of aircraft, so I offered to fly it. But Dave's never flown anything quite like this. A bush plane tricked out with a helicopter turbine engine. All right. And it's taken 12 years to get it to first flight. It's had probably 100 different engineers on it. So you start thinking of every nut and bolt and hoping they're all done up right. If you have an issue and the wheels won't come down or something like that, we'll just put you into a circuit. It's not an air show, but air boss Donna Flynn is here to help her friend. My role is just just be Dave's eyes and ears on the ground. It'll be all right. It will. It'll be great. Dave will also have an extra pair of eyes in the sky. Pilot Ken Fowler will be Dave's wingman. Thank you. Now, when you line up on the runway and you're about to go airborne for the very first time in an airplane, it's nerve wracking. that controls the right aileron is too loose, leaving Dave in a battle to steer the plane. Overheating, the temperature's climbing and climbing, he could catch fire. The biggest thing is catastrophic failure of the engine. It could just stop. In the high desert over Reno, The Patriots fight their way through a practice. A little loud. Sir, back now. Big belly one. On the ground, the crew watches the pilots struggle. With this altitude and the density, everything's slower. The thin air and the high elevation, combined with the heat, is robbing performance from the jets. Power up. No idea there. And two, three. I've got a little more spacing than all. If you just keep it a little bit wider. The whole formation is expanded out because of the density altitude, and all the timings are thrown out the window. Son of a bitch. Sorry, guys. It's over. That's probably the worst show I've ever seen us do. Sorry, guys. I thought the winds were flying my burger plane more than I was. Just kind of bouncing around and a little bit ugly. We're not off to a good start in Reno. Super Dave's test flight is out of control. Dave's got steering problems. And now the engine could seize up. My heart was beating like crazy because he wasn't just facing one challenge, he was facing a few. And we didn't have time on our side. A loose control cable is making it difficult for Dave to steer and land. I gotta get down. Reporting. You're gonna get lined up on the damn runway. Go around and take out the pass at it. I feel like I'm just starting to rip. We're gonna come up now. Show pilot Dave Matheson is in trouble on the first flight of a home built bush plane. Hey, Donna, call the crash shuttle. You got it, hang on. 
The engine is overheating, and Dave is struggling with the controls. I gotta let... I'm worried now. He doesn't have the luxury of floating around out there and trying to get the problem arrested. He's got a lamp. Ah. start to shake and knees start to shake you know then you get that whole flood of emotion to you know thank god you didn't die it didn't work so good when dave landed he was shaking like a leaf it was very very hard on him i literally was flying like this all over without before you get movement yeah good job. dave's got to pull himself together He's due at an air show tomorrow, where he plans to perform a risky new stunt in his MX-2. Yeah, that was uh, bloody scary. I would expect you to get out. I will get out of there. Okay. Close calls and accidents are part of the business. Smoke on, ready now. Something Randy Howell and his jet team experienced two seasons ago here in Reno. During the air races, a plane went out of control. It was one of the worst accidents in 40 years. 69 people injured, 11 dead. It was a very close friend of mine flying the airplane that crashed. We had our jets parked in the ramp at Reno. Several of our team members came very close to losing their lives. My jet, the number five jet, was hit with a large piece of metal. It's, it's right here, right in the nose. This is what I look at every time I fly this airplane. I am actually glad they didn't fix it. It's a reminder to me of the fragile balance of things going right to things going horribly wrong in a second. Blue break now, red break now, white break now. We can't let the shadow of what happened here affect us. You get into that airplane, you strap into the seat, and you let everything go. Have a good flight. Yeah. Be safe. Have a good flight. Yeah. Scratch and the team will never forget. But right now, they've got a show to do. Super Dave has put his nail biter of a test flight behind him. In time for an air show in tiny Vanderhoof, BC. I've had a ton of close calls. If I gave in to my fears, I'd never fly again. And Dave's relieved to see a familiar face. Tango Mike Echo, the runway is clear. Airboss Donna Flynn. What else would you like? Hug. <laughs> Vanderhoof is not the biggest show in the world. Very small site, one main hangar on the field. Tango Mike Echo, switch over to one, two, three, one. Vanderhoof hasn't hosted an air show for 15 years, and it shows. We got to the site, a lot of things weren't in place. Fencing not in place, security not in place. That's Rita, he cannot go on the runway. Go tell him, he cannot go on the runway. Everybody was knew what they were doing. Lots of things needed to be fixed. It's a good thing that both Ray and I were on site. Ray Furkus is Donna's backup air boss and husband. Nobody else has been briefed. I don't understand. Both of us are type A personalities. More than once, we uh, are uh, struggling to see the other person's perspective because we're quite confident that we're right. I'm going to have you come in on Alpha. Bravo. He said Bravo. Bravo. Did he say Bravo? He told oh, you. actually, no. He just changed his mind. Bravo. Wayne Walker, Carol Pilon, and her pilot, Marcus Payne, have just pulled into town. 
And I'd rather fly earlier than later because it'll be cooler. Uh-huh. All right. I'm at the airport right now, but I got to start prepping to fly. Carol and her trailer barely made it. She's getting really damn thin in spots. Uh, there's almost no thread left. The one on the other side over here, and the whole outside is rounding off. I need to get them changed. It's as simple as that. And someone thinks he has a solution. We should see if they're the same as mine, because I'm getting rid of all four of those. And if you want them, you can have them. Why are you doing that? I just got a tire sponsor, and they want to put all new tires on everywhere. I couldn't see throwing them away, and I can't have the room to take it with me. She's got a trailer right there, so I thought, do you want to at least look at them, see if they're any good? If they're any good to you, you can have them. I was offered tires. I'm not taking them. It's that simple. There's free stuff, and then there's free stuff you pay for. I think Carol is a little guarded. She evaluates motives. What's in it for them? You know, is this a gift? Or is this, I want something from you later? But I mean, if your tires are still good, you should just save them. You could always use them later for something. Why would I take his tires? Besides, I can buy my own tires. So did they give you instructions back at the shop which ones had to go? Carol's thrilled to find a tire repairman, especially this one. Glad they sent me on this one. <laughs> oh, God, he was as cute as a little speckled pup. See that red airplane? Yeah. I'm going to be walking on the outside of it. Can I get a picture with you quickly? Absolutely. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what Very I'm talking good. about. That's what I'm talking about. And he just had this big grin on him. Ah, cute as hell, man. If I was 20 years younger, I'd have been all over that. This kid's just working his ass off in this heat. I know. It was hot as hell. And this guy is in the blazing sun changing these tires. Carol and I looked at each other and said, hmm. Are you coming tomorrow to the show? We'll get you up to the front. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Like a VIP? Yeah. Yes. Uh, that'd be freaking awesome. Uh, it's a deal. <laughs> All right. This is the best tire change I've ever done. And what's his name, by the way? I, I forgot. Don't know. <laughs> the third leg always finishes the same direction I start. In the hangar, Super Dave pairs up with one of the most unique performers on the circuit. Dan's just an inspiration. He flies a, a hang glider being towed by a truck. Dan Buchanan broke his back hang gliding 32 years ago. It wasn't a crash, it was just a hard landing. Essentially, I got bonked in the head with the hang glider, which gave me a compression fracture. Paralysis couldn't keep Dan out of the sky. He performed his first air show in 1989 and has been a crowd favorite ever since. He does a night pyrac, which is awesome. His old act is really, really good. That dude is like the Energizer Benny. He's an awesome performer. So I won't start zipping you until the third pass. And now, Super Dave is getting in on the act. Dave will attempt to slice ribbons dangling 40 feet behind Dan's hang glider. But if Dave hits the nearly invisible cable that connects Dan to his truck, the stunt will end in disaster. And if I'm coming at you from even from behind, though, I'm coming as close as I possibly can to get the ribbons without cutting Dan in half. And I'm doing, you know, 200 miles an hour. Once I see 1,000 on my altimeter, okay. I'm going after you. <laughs> Just don't go beneath me. OK. Because there's no tow line above me. Have you seen Donna? I have not. Well, I'm let's about to. Let's talk to Ray, then. Carol and Marcus prepare to practice, but something's missing. Have you seen a fire truck? I uh, have not seen the fire truck. Practice day does not preclude us from having accidents. I've got 20 gallons of ab gas. I've got 15 gallons of smoke oil. I've, at best, got two minutes to live um, if a fire breaks out in my airplane. We need to go and talk to the airbox about a fire truck, because I do not on. want to go practice without a fire truck. Yeah. Do you have an ear for me? Yeah, There's no crash fire rescue. Have have I just told them to get them out here. Most of the time, we will have the fire crews on site. It just depends on the town. Do we have an ETA? How, how long? Tomorrow, they're going to be here at night. They will be here tomorrow. They're all volunteers. This is a very small town, so their fire crews are volunteers. And uh, sometimes you can't get them to rally and come out every day. I was just talking with a guy from the city. No crash fire today. Carol was not happy with that. She wanted the fire trucks on site for good reason. Carol is forever haunted by an accident that claimed the love of her life. Jimmy Franklin was my hero. 
My husband, my ex-husband, my partner in crime. He was all those things to me. In 2005, Jimmy was performing at an air show when his biplane collided mid-air with another plane. I was at home, and I got the call from a very close friend of mine. And he said, there's been an accident, and Jim was involved. And I'm like, uh, what's it like? He says, it's bad. And I'm like, is there a fire? He says, yeah, there was a lot of fire. And then the call came that he was, you know, he'd perish. The guy that she was married to died in an airplane, in an air show. So she carries that for sure. With no fire trucks on site, the decision is easy. We're standing down. No fire truck, no fly. Every now and then, you got to get up in somebody's face and just tell them you can't bloody do it. While Carol's standing down, Patriots check. the Patriots are gearing up in Reno. It's showtime. It's going to be a good show today, I think. The team hopes yesterday's practice worked out all the kinks of flying in the thin, hot desert air. In the tower, the Patriot safety officer, John King, call sign Sky, is the communication link between the air boss and the pilots. I'm suggesting runway 26. Speed breaks in ready now. Stand by lights. I start the jet up. And right away, I notice the bloody hydraulics are not working right. OK, let's switch airplane. We'll hold position until he's ready. If we start late, they're going to lop off the end of our show. And we're here to fly as much as we can. We seem to have a low hydraulic indication on number five. So we're going to swap over to seven, just to be sure. I'm feeling the pressure. I can feel the guys peering at me through their visors. You can feel the pressure from the tower and the air boss. I'm feeling the heat. This is taking way longer than it should. I go to start the airplane. Wow, right over the limit. I had a hot start. No! Minutes before launch, Scratch has to swap to the backup jet. I had a hot start. No! But now, the spare won't start. 610, hot start. Hot start is when something goes wrong in the combustion process. It builds up too much temperature, and it over temps. It could cause a fire or an explosion. Turn it around again. They say, OK, go start it again. I start it again. Same thing, right over the limits. No, I'm not happy with this jet. And I shut it down again. I said, that's two hot starts. I'm done. All right, I think you guys need to go. Race control, Patriot 1. We're going to taxi 5 at this point. I just broke two jets. I am sitting on the ground like a chump watching the five airplanes fly. I'm going to start it. With the spare jet a no-go, Randy jumps back into jet five. I know that airplane well. I've cycled the flaps and speed brakes a few times and got the pressure up. It just needed to be run a little bit, and number five is running good. I look over, and they're flagging me over. The airplane's running. I'm confused. I see Randy crawling out of it. He goes, it's good. Get in. Yeah, with him. OK. Patriots were cleared line up at runway 32. They're off and running now and fly a six-ship show. Yeah, baby. You've got the airspace, Wilbur. Patriots, high show, lights on. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Patriots. The red, white, and blue smoke of only the Patriots for you. Turn back on something, 5160. Scratch and Banker break away from the pack for a hit, closing in on each other at nearly a thousand miles an hour. And hit. Perfect hit, Scratch. Awesome. 
Everything's as we expected it to be, but. Guys, be very cautious of the rain shaft off in the left basket. We're not in the rain at the moment, but then I get the call, don't take the airplanes, show left. So I'm playing in my mind the sequence and trying to think on my feet immediately of how I'm going to be able to recover the demonstration, but avoid the entire left side of the field. Where did it hit there, Joe? There, okay, there's another. Big strike. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably about three miles. The risk of getting a lightning strike in the air is it could burn a hole in the airplane, it could fry your electronics. Worst case scenario, it could ignite the fuel. It's, it's coming in right now. I think we need to knock it off. Just land the jet. We're going to stop now. We're going to knock it off. Uh, Ground terminate, winds uh, 290 at 11. Major terminate, 1 terminate, 2 terminate, 3 terminate, 4 terminate, 5 terminate, 6 terminate. It's not the show they'd hoped for, but they'll get another shot at it tomorrow. Too bad we had to knock it off, but we had to. There's no barriers up. That's craziness. Recipe for disaster. At the small town air show in Vanderhoof, people and propellers are a dangerous mix. What a cluster. The local producers, they're not professionals. They don't do this for a living. So they do drop the ball a little bit. Careful with the chicken. He's there for safety. Mitch, I got a rope this out. There's kids crawling all over it. My number one goal is taking care of my airplane. I have to keep it safe. OK, guys, you can't cross this big line, OK? Might keep them out. Awesome. <laughs> but there is one spectator Carol is happy to have up close and personal. Look who I found out in the field. Oh, Mr. Trevor. Yes. Mr. Trevor. Yeah. Over here. <laughs> this is a small town kid. He shows up on a service call. Little does he know he's actually changing tires for a wing walker. Still not nervous? No. All right. I'll wave at you. Marcus, the airspace is yours. Good copy, boss. I feel scared for her. Carol gets set to deliver some shock and awe to her newest fan. Holy crap! No way! That is awesome! She's on the very top of it. I wouldn't try that. you get the chance to just go out and touch somebody's life. And you got to do it. If you don't do it, you're just like, what's the point of living, right? I don't often get the opportunity to do that, but today it worked. Thank you so much for coming out, Trevor. Did yeah, you enjoy yourself? Trevor. Oh, I had an awesome time. Both sides. I'm French. Oh, exactly. That chick, she's awesome. Take care. Bye. Carol's wrapped, making way for Super Day. Our boss reads you uh, five by five. Copy. It's the debut of Dave's risky stunt with paralyzed hand glider, Dan Buchanan. Super Dave and I wanted to do this for a long time. We'd rehearsed it before, but it was the first time live. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dan Buchanan to the show. <laughs> There's a Kevlar wire from his hand glider down to the truck. So if I hit that, not only will it take my wing off, it'll kill Dan as well. OK, driver, give me 35, 35. Everything has to work on both of our ends. What's going on here? Super Dave getting a little close. My plan of attack was to always stay behind him. So I avoid that wire, and then just take passes at those ribbons till I'm comfortable enough to start clipping them. For the first time, Super Dave attempts a death-defying stunt with a hang glider pilot. 
I heard this bang. I thought I actually hit him. It just scared the hell out of me. The bang was just the sound of Dave's wing cutting the ribbons. All part of the act. There's zero margin for error. Try a couple Cuban and see how many times you can get back on target. Yeah, I'm coming as close as 20 feet to Dan's feet. It's, uh, it's stressful. What are you doing, Dave? Give me a bit of a haircut. Trust is everything if you're going to try to pull off that stunt. Just don't come through his shoelaces, OK, buddy? <laughs> Good job, Dave. That was a lot of fun, Dale. What an act. Dan Buchanan and Dave Matheson, very entertaining. Having a permanent injury, being in a wheelchair, has actually been a good thing. I almost want to say I would do it again. Thank you all so much. Please drive safely on the way home and do take your garbage. And don't forget your lawn chairs, because I need a few. The air show started off a little chaotic, but in the end, it worked out really good. And I got to fly with Dan and cut his ribbons. The next afternoon, Super Dave's back on home turf, putting in some much needed repairs on his plane's brakes. My caliper is leaking, so it's pouring the fluid out. My brake was getting soft, and now it's screwed. So, always something with this. <laughs> For the next few days, Dave's sharing his hangar space with air show buddy Pete McLeod. This dog and pony show? Yeah. The air racer and aerobatic pilot had a rough start to his show season. Climbing for altitude, back on the stick. Battling bad weather and a broken leg to fly his first show. It feels like someone just kicked it a few times. After some time to heal. I just want to check in if there's any traffic on the uh, north runway there. Negative. Pete's pushing hard and back at work promoting his next big gig flying in front of a quarter million people tonight at a fireworks festival. That's more into my world than Red Bull. You've got a full day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. of getting your name and the brand out there. But Pete's publicity day isn't over yet. How's it going, guys? <laughs> hey, bud. Hey, how, how are you? He's promised some rides, but his Edge 540 only has room for one. Pete asked to borrow my airplane, because uh, it's a two-seater. You clear there? Lots of room here. He's the only one in Canada like it, so I loan it to him. You all set, Craig? Yeah, let's do all it. All right, let's do it. Yeah. I feel like I just loaned my girlfriend to Pete McLeod. Turkey Golf Indian Charlie Alpha, pit ground, runway 18, tilt over to 3009. That's the first time I've ever seen a fly. I'm always in it. We're gonna work this thing a little bit, see what this MX can do. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Giddy up. Oh, buddy. Be nice to her, Pete. Head back, or? Yeah, let's start up and head back. All right, let's do it. Not bad for not knowing what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Looks nice, actually. I've never seen it, actually. As soon as I came to a stop, there was a big flash of smoke. Is there an extinguisher in there? Any extinguisher, quick. You're sitting with a fuel tank between your knees. It's not something you want to spend a lot of time in if it's on fire. The brakes, just serviced an hour ago, overheated, triggering the fire. Luckily, we had an extinguisher because it was probably five seconds away from compromising the wing, and then the airplane would have been gone. Yeah, it was a good fire on that side. Dave probably thinks that if he was in the plane, it wouldn't have happened. Like, as soon as I pulled in here, and I stopped, I stopped. After a streak of bad luck, Pete can't afford to blow his one-man show tonight. It's a big event. You want everything to go right.
at one of the top air shows in North America. The Patriots are back in the sky. Got that corner marker. Yeah, you did. Pilot John Possum, call sign boards, sets up for his signature stunt. Tail slides are something that are fairly common among the small propeller aircraft. But to do it in a jet, it's a little bit different animal. The tail slide is a really unique maneuver. And as far as I know, Boards is the only one who does a tail slide in a jet. In a tail slide, the aircraft climbs straight up until it runs out of power. As it starts to slide backwards, the pilot fights to keep the nose up. Boards is going straight up. This time it was different. Whoa, look at him. I'm watching him during this tail slide, and it's not the typical tail slide. In fact, it's not a tail slide. It's really just an airplane going up and then just flopping around like a leaf. He's out of control. Is going straight up. Attempting a maneuver called the tail slide, Jet 3 is in trouble. Boards is now in an uncontrolled free fall. He's out of control. Oh, God. It fell back on top of itself and started the early signs of an inverted flat spin. Whoa, look at him. My eyes were locked on him until I saw the nose finally get pointed straight down and stay down so that he built up some airspeed and pulled out. Ports is a pro. He's the best at this. He got the airplane back under control. We were back in the show. Agents got the box. Two, three, four, five, six. Smoke going right now. Never get tired of seeing that. The show is a huge success, but the pilots are still shaken by the tail slide. Boards typically pulls out of the tail slide by pushing the nose forward into a dive. But this time, the jet fell backwards, giving Boards less time to recover. For the team, that was the scariest moment of the season. Oh, that was fun. I hadn't blown one of those and had it go on its back in probably six years, seven years. I was getting too cocky. You were, you were like this, anyway? Yeah. You scared one of the three quarters. Well, that had us a little spooked, for sure. But at the end of the day, it was a great show that we were all really proud of. Pete McLeod gets ready for a special one-man show in front of a quarter million people. It's not a typical air show, but it's top priority for me in my season. The aerobatic pilot has been hired to fly for the next two nights before a fireworks show. I'll do it so forward is on. On this flight, Pete has an added distraction, a live camera installed in his cockpit. The idea is when I'm flying there, they'll have uh, in cockpit uh, shots on the video wall of me uh, at the event. I'll put this in here. I've already set the frequency. Air bosses Donna and Ray are already on location. This is a really good challenge for him. 250,000 to 300,000 people will be watching that 10 minute display. Hi, Pete. Just a reminder that the only thing that I really need to talk to you other than to establish comms will be to remind you to turn on your onboard camera. Yeah. Time to go. Get her done. It's a 20-mile flight from Pete's hangar to Vancouver's waterfront. Are you guys ready for some hardcore, heart stopping air show action? I'm coming in and everything's good to go. You see the cameras on the beach start to light up. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Yes. Now let's go live to the cockpit and let's talk with Pete. Pete, are you there? I pull up for my first maneuver and. I get this call on the radio from Ray. Video system on there, Pete. I went for the switch and I couldn't find it. 
And it kind of threw me off. Pete McLeod has just started his routine in front of a quarter million people. I pull up for my first maneuver. But is distracted by his live camera. Video system on there, Pete. I went for the switch and I couldn't find it. And it kind of threw me off. It just really screwed up my entry to the spin, so I boarded that. Reposition. Just something funky happened. Smoke coming the wrong way through the cowling. It was a terrible start to the show. Quick turnaround brings him right back to show center. Let's see what he's going to do next. Pete finishes the show with a high G climb. But he's not impressed. I'm sure from the beach, people loved it, thought it was great. But as a personal vibe, feeling, I never connected with the airplane like I like to. I was, you know, I was pissed kind of about the show. I, didn't, I wasn't happy with it. Ooh. Bit of a show, but got her done. Pete has one more shot tomorrow night. The Patriots have redeemed themselves in Reno and can't pass up a chance to celebrate with the super fans. These are the best fans right here in the whole Reno Air Races, right here. This whole section, right here. section three is just the rowdiest group of spectators you'll ever meet in your life. They are hardcore air show fans, and they wear bright orange so that everybody knows who they are. You feel like a rock star. You feel like somebody really appreciates what you do. These are the diehard fans. We came here this year with something to prove, and we delivered. I don't think Reno has seen the last of the Patriots. After being thrown off his game in front of 300,000 people last night, Pete's determined not to make the same mistake tonight. This is a one-off Pete McLeod event. It's a make or break thing for my business. Show boss, Red Bull Ace Force, let's go. Does it ever look too busy down there? You got at least twice to crop tonight. See you guys, I've got the camera on. You've got the camera on. Excellent, thank you. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, from the left, Pete McLeod. That's got to hurt. Look at him as he climbs into the sky, up to negative eight Gs. All right, keep an eye on Pete McLeod. Pete lines up for his final pass. Just 20 feet off the water, upside down right down the entire length of the show line. The blood rushing to the head. What a tremendous performance at the Edge 540. Excellent, excellent. Went, everything went perfect. Not, not a dang thing wrong with that. Pete's luck is finally turning. Just a wicked flight that doesn't get any better than that. That was the best flight I've had in three years. To call it a comeback of this season would be an understatement. Final. Next time on Air Show. We're half done today. A mad dash. Three different air shows over two days. Marathon weekend. If our pilots don't make it here, 
Oh, We're not gonna have much of a show. What's going on down there? A deadly creep. Son of a bitch. Inside Pete's wing. Kyle, Kyle. Gets everyone's attention. Pete's got a problem? Something this small kill you just like that. And a patriot is forced into a dangerous stall. Uh -oh. I'm only a few hundred feet above the ground. 